Hello, I'm David Denton and welcome to this time-lapse video showing the process behind my latest painting Stiff Upper Lip. Because the time lapse is actually pretty long, I've split it into two sections. So today we're going to be looking at the painting of the sky and the buildings, and there'll also be a little bit of writing. Okay, don't worry. The writing's just a tiny little bit of an extra where I talk about the planning process behind my paintings to give you an insight into that. So without any further ado, let's see how I paint the sky. So as you can see from the video, the first thing that I did was to put in a blue background and the background gets gradually lighter as it gets towards the horizon. So all I've done is start with blue at the top and then add tiny, tiny amounts of white as I've gone further down the, the board. Now you can see there that I've put across the board what appears to be dental floss but it's actually cotton that I've taped in place. Now, the reason why I've done that is because those lines there are parallel with the horizon. The horizon's not in the painting, so I've had to suggest it through the direction of the clouds. So as you can see there, I've painted the clouds in line with those cotton lines. The way that I've painted the clouds, and I'll, I'll do another little video on this in more detail later, is to first of all, put in the white part of it so I'll paint in the brightest white and then I'll add a little bit of water so it gradually greys out and then I put washers different coloured washers over the top to either darken it down or to add a little bit of colour to it and that was all done quite quickly the next step was to block in the buildings and all the main colours on those now for my reference photos there wasn't actually a lot of difference in tone on the on the actual buildings so that was a really quick job to do that the buildings were all very stark white so i've stuck with that look now this was just painful beyond belief doing all of this i had to use three point perspective with the vanishing points way off the illustration board so I had to have a big long piece of wood that I used to draw in all the lines and it took quite a while but I think it helps to make it look realistic getting that perspective just spot on. Now for quite a long time now I'm going to be painting windows. Now you get off quite lightly with this because your version is sped up a lot. I was doing this for weeks, just painting little windows. I'll tell you a little story and then we'll go on to talk about something else while I'm doing that. I tried to, as I was painting the windows, think about who was living in each flat and I'd paint the windows and what's in them accordingly. And that livened it up for me, made it more interesting and hopefully more interesting when you actually look at the painting. You can imagine too who would live in each of these flats. One of the magic parts when you actually paint in the windows is that you just paint it as normal and then the final little stage to actually make it look like a window is to put a white wash over the top of it. And that thin white wash just brings it alive, makes it look like a real window. You can see on some of the ones at the top there how I've put it in slightly in lines so that it appears more as if it's getting reflections from other buildings. Now while I carry on with this laborious process of painting all the windows in, we'll go back to the planning stages of the painting. And if you've never read any of my blogs, then you won't know this part of it. What I do at the very start of the painting is I come up with an idea of what the painting's going to be about, and I've generally got an idea of roughly what it's going to look like but then I do something that's going to let me modify that and change it. And sometimes it takes the painting off in strange and unusual directions. So what I do is I use a process of free association and it's something that the Surrealists did and it's something that I've applied to my paintings. So I'll take the main theme of the painting and I'll write it down at the top of a piece of paper. Then what I'll do is I'll just let my mind go blank and just write down any words that come to me 
just put them all down i don't worry thinking about what they mean whether they're relevant to the painting i just put them in write them down and write a list of words until i feel like that's about enough we can have a go at this process now if you want to if you want to join in then you can get yourself a pen and paper or something to make notes on and we'll have a go now we're going to start with a fairly innocuous word I generally start with quite a dark theme for my paintings and work from there but if we start with a nice pleasant word hopefully we'll stay pleasant throughout so we'll start with the word ice cream so I'm going to write that at my top of my piece of paper and then I'm going to spend what, 20 seconds or so just writing down the first thing that comes into my head don't think about what it means, just write it down and we'll see where we get to by the end. I'll put on a nice little bit of music as we do this and let's see where we get to. Okay then, so I start with the word ice cream, imagining that I'm going to be painting a picture about ice cream, and let's see the words that I got. So I've got ice cream, tasty, melting, dripping, running, screwball, that was those um, weird things that you got in the 70s with a little bit of bubble gum in the bottom that were a bit disgusting. Chewy, sour, fake, saccharin, sugar, teeth, rotten, decay, dying now i start with ice cream to get something a bit more pleasant i still end up with dying as the last word on my list never mind anyway so then what i do is i, I look at that list and i highlight words that jump out at me don't have to think too hard about this it's just which words jump out without thinking about it so i went for melting and saccharin now when i actually do the planning process i would then do a list for both of those but for now i'm just going to do a list for one of them now if you want to join in, just pause the video, go off and write another list of your own. But I went for melting, so I've got melting, sun, heat, red hot, molten, metal, dripping again, sizzling, steaming, too warm, sweating, escape, get out, shade. So again we've kind of gone to something a bit darker about escaping and getting out that's just the way my brain works so then same process again i ring words that just jump out at me so i've got molten shade and then i've done dripping because that's come up on both lifts so far so that's the one that i've decided to go with in my final list so my final list is dripping disintegrating disappearing vanishing never been never existed empty space void vacuum space deep space cold unforgiving inhospitable so again it's gone quite dark by the end so if i was going to be painting a picture about ice cream which don't worry it's never going to happen i would look through those lists and i'd take things that just jump out at me so i would go for decay obviously because that's the kind of thing i do shade would be a good one sizzling and steaming's good and too warm molten i like that idea um deep space is good unforgiving inhospitable empty space and void so there's lots of ideas in there and that's all just from ice cream so if you take a meteor theme as your very first idea you get meteor things as you go through so seeing as though this painting's all about putting on a brave face and being very fake to the outside world I started with the word fake and I did many many lists probably about 12 or so lists and the words that came up to me that directly influenced it were reality grinning let's see what else bathosphere which obviously was one of the main influences pressure dark alone cracking bright outside now there's many more things on there as well 
but one of the other things that I do with free association is I just sit down get the general theme in my head and then I just write so I've actually got in my little book about three full pages of just blurb that comes out of my brain so again I don't think about it I don't think what it means just random things come out on my last painting um, skin the shine of the rain that's where the title actually came from just popped out of my head don't know where it came from but I quite like that when I look back at it afterwards but on this painting the, the part that really jumped out to me was this bit a tiny seed in a sea of blackness waiting to sprout and germinate to send tendrils throughout my nervous system and that gave rise to the to the way that the bathosphere looks like a seed germinating and it's got the roots underneath but the roots are actually the central nervous system. So here's the finished painting where you can see all those elements coming together and it is different from what I imagined at the start but I allow the free association process to take me down routes that I wouldn't necessarily go and I end up painting things that I wouldn't necessarily paint and it's fun. So I hope you've enjoyed that little insight into my planning process. Thank you very much for watching and if you've got any comments or questions pop them in the box below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I recorded this video on the 21st of December 2016 on a freezing cold morning, that's why I've got my coat on, so I'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Next year I've got more things lined up for my YouTube channel, I've got more tutorials, time lapses and lots of other fun things too. So until then, I'm David Denton and you've been watching David Denton Art. <laughs>